Good morning. Today's lesson is going to focus on some beach houses and a lot of little variations that you could do with um, this whole sort of theme. You could keep it as painted beach houses. This reminds me of, um, I was doing some research on these. I just kept seeing bright colored little bungalows on the beach and there's a place in um, I think it's Melbourne, Australia, where on the beach there are these little teeny, I call them little row houses, but the doors open up and I guess you could rent them for the day uh, or the week possibly. And it's like a little one room um, cabana house and they are absolutely adorable. So if you have time, go look at that because that is the inspiration for these little guys. Uh, I did this one a couple different ways. Uh, first I've started with a painted background and we'll I'll walk you through that and then I started using uh, painted paper and I collage these so it kind of has that little Eric Carl flair to it um, and of course then I went back with all the paint pen and added some shimmery you can see those little dots to the sand and on the roofs the little thatching up there um, but another idea that you could go with this and these are very simple very very simple we're talking you know shapes you could get as detailed as you wanted to using your paintbrush um, you could put shadowing in you know you could do multiple um, you know different things to the huts themselves to give it more depth but I thought this was pretty cute if you were if you had to go to a housewarming party put the address of their new house on a cute little painted canvas this one i collaged as well this is painted paper the pink is paper i was making sure i could feel it um, the yellow is torn paper and the blue is as well and the sun uh, and, and the little heart this could have a screw eye in the top and then you could string on some cute little ribbon and give them an ornament to always remember their a new home. Well, I just think that's a cute little idea. The other idea I had was these are those wooden panels that um, came from Michael's Arts and Crafts. And I think they're a um, dollar a piece. You could do the same thing. Um, you know, and make a little vacation memory. Let's say you all, you rented a house somewhere. You know, you write the name of the house, um, you know, where it was, South Carolina, etc. That'd be a great Christmas ornament to go on a tree. And these wooden coasters, um, I'm trying to think where I got these. They either, mm, they're either um, Hobby Lobby, Michaels. I don't think they came from Walmart, but they're wooden coasters. So they're nice and thick, and you could put a screw eye in the top of this too. And I think that's a great little ornament size. We're gonna be venturing um, into creating all these great little ornaments in future classes. But think about how you could use um, this whole little house concept for different ideas. I'm ready for summer. I'm ready for the beach. I'm ready for warm weather and bright colors and just uh, warmer weather all the time. So we're gonna get started on this little baby right here. I used watercolor paper. You could use a canvas. You could use, like I said, the board if you wanted to put it on there. But I have um, paper ready to go here. And the first thing that I did, I'm gonna scoot this one up here, out of the way. I did, um, I squirted some paint scoot this up for us a little bit there we go I did the water oh that's a lot and I literally squirted some paint out on here and I took my brush and I just mixed it and I went back and forth and I just did you know the bottom two inches here not much and of course, I wanted some texture in it, so I flipped that baby over, 
and started scratching through some waves. You don't have to do this. You could always tear some of your fabulous painted paper and add your own waves in um, to the bottom part. We can layer it on top. Now for the sky. Uh, you can see up here, it, I took a little bit of a lighter approach and uh, I used a paper towel to blot it off. So what I did was I'm going to take the same wet brush and I'm going to wet, wet, wet. This one will be a little bit darker, but that's okay. And I'm doing this super quick because this watercolor paper will dry really quick. Now, paper towel and blot, blot, blot. This is nice because it does make it dry rather quickly. So there it is on my paper towel. Then I went back, and you can barely see it on my painting. Then I went back and I took some white right out of the right out of the jug, blotted it around on my paper towel, and I'm gonna make I'm just gonna make some some little clouds back here. However you want to. Now your houses are gonna be covering up most of that, so if you get a little heavy handed, that doesn't matter. That's okay. And then I added in the sand strip that goes through here. And let's see here. This is just a good old Naples yellow. If you don't have that, you could mix a little white in with some brown. Um, we're just getting kind of a sand color. And I also added a little white straight out of the jug here to that one as well. I'm going to grab just a different brush because my other one has still got blue in it. And I'm going to pull the sand across. Now, my blue isn't all the way dry, so it's going to it's gonna pick some up. I'm just being a little impatient today, but that's okay. You all get the idea. So there's our sand. Does it have to be all the way blended? No. I kind of like the blue in it. It um, gives it a little, little depth. All right, there's our sand. So, we're going to let this dry for just a second or two. You can go and hit it with the hair dryer like I always do. Or we can just pull it aside for the time being. We're going to come back to this one now that we have our background completed. If you notice, all the houses are the same size. So, I took my painted paper and... I made just kind of a, a little stencil. I took a color. Let's see here. Um, I need to make more painted paper. I can't believe I'm actually saying that, but I totally need to make more painted paper. I'm running extremely low. And it always makes me happy to do that. So, so I'm going to cut a rectangle out. i got a dog trying to get in here, of course. So here's a rectangle, and we can trim it up a little bit so it's not, you know, so wonky. Um, I cut these out, but I also ripped the bottoms so they looked like they were sitting in the sand. Because when I put them on the first time, they looked like they were just sitting on top of it. Almost like a little kid had drawn houses. So we're going to wait. I'm going to cut that in just a second. So here's one. Let's find another color here. Uh, we'll take the yellow. Now, the beauty of this, cut one and then go ahead, lay it on top, cut the next one. So they all end up just about the same size. So there's two house bodies. And let's dig out another sheet. I kind of like the red. Let's do the red. And we'll put that baby on there. I love, I love, my favorite part of this whole painting was the palm trees. And that's just because I love palm trees. 
and we're going to do a whole class on the palm tree, palm and frond paintings. All right, so I'm not not so sure that I really love these colors together, but we're going to go with it anyway here. So I have three houses. I need, of course, three doors and three little triangle thatch looking roofs. Look at that paper. Isn't that pretty? So I'm going to take this one. I'm just going to kind of look here. You could draw this out if you wanted to with a pencil. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to make my roof come a little bit past the top of the edge of the house. What am I saying? Let's see what this looks like. All right, I'm liking that. I might make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, looks a little little wide. All right, so there's one. And I do like how it overhangs a tiny bit. So you would repeat that until you get all three rooftops. Um, it's a green color. Like I said, green and a lot going on on this one. I'm going to lay that one right there. See if we can calm that down a little bit. <laughs> you could use solid pieces of painted paper. Or you could make these out of paint. You don't have to, you know, cut them out. Uh, let's see. That one. Let's go with a purple. I'm thinking I cut up some hydrangeas earlier to make a roof. Uh, why not? I'll cut these hydrangeas up. That'll work. That will work. And I was trying to kind of stick with a little bit of a color theme. So like if I did a purple, purple roof on one, I might do a purple door on the next one. So the colors do kind of um, carry throughout. So a door, good old um, rectangle. I wonder if you can hear my dogs inside howling. You could put that one there. Um, I don't think that door's big enough because these huts were, um, they're out on the beach and the doors open, kind of like garage doors almost. So let's find, oh, I really need some bright yellow here. Let's, let's try this one. And of course, once I made this, once I did my first one, my husband said, I think I like, I think I liked these little, uh, the moon, the star, and the sun. Like on the top of the house. So that's an option. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to move my, I think I'll move these roofs down. But I also have to tear off the bottom. So that's okay. All right. So that's kind of a, kind of a good shape for our little door. Uh, let's see here. Purple. Let's grab another little blue or a purple here. Some of this paper that I'm using is super thick. Uh, it's just got layers and layers of um, painted goodness under it. I like that. I like that. And what color for this one? Ugh. I don't want yellow, but I don't really want the same green, pink. Okay, we'll see here. Think, think. Um, I guess we'll go with purple. I just did that purple one. This is what happens when you've got too much stuff here on your table. Let's go with the same pattern as that right there. Let's go a little bit crazy on that one. All right, we'll make sure that's pretty much the same size here because these houses, they were, they're all uniform. So, all right, I like it. That'll be cute. That will be cute. And so I told you we're going to rip the bottoms of these off so they look like they're sitting in the sand. So just grab and tear and tear about the same amount off of each one. The nice thing is you'll line these up first and then you'll put your little roof on. So if your tearing measurements aren't exactly right, it's okay. And I did tear 
the bottoms of the doors too to make them look like they were flush in the sand. We might put these right in the center here. Little doors. Okay. But you get the idea here. Da -da -da -da. Looking good. Eric Carl will be so proud of us today. All right, so now we have the basis of our of our little structures. Um, you could, like I've seen some of these that had, um, they just had different little icons on them, like the heart or a moon or a star, or even if you took some white paper and you cut out a, like an anchor, that was another one, but you cut out like a life ring um, this is kind of thick. Uh, I guess it's a life ring, life preserver. And that was at the top. Or you could give them numbers or letters. You know, you could put a letter of each of your family members on them. You know, well, that kind of looks like a donut now. But you could add, um, you know, the red painted paper over top of it to make it look like a life ring. And these are a little bit big, but that was just an idea. Um, so I'm going to go, I'll go with the, the moon again, because I like the moon. The moon, the sun. You could do a moon, sun, and star. That'd be kind of cute. Of course you could. So. so here's a moon. And I think they looked really cute on the top. Um, what did I say? A star? I'm going to do a purple star maybe. I'll grab another piece of purple. Um, you can draw these on the back and then cut them out. My stars, when I make them, are never uh, perfect. I don't like them like that. I like them a little wonky to begin with. And you can swap them around to see where you like them the best. And I'll cut a heart out. Why not? Uh, what color heart do I want? Uh, maybe I go with yellow Ooh, or green. All right, I'm going with green. So I painted on, and I think I had a bunch of paint. And that's, that's big, but that's okay. I had a bunch of paint left over from the kids at school, and I wasn't about to throw it away. So I had, I had no paper here at the house either. It was when I first started this. And um, so I was painting on paper bags because I didn't want to lose the paint. I didn't want to just get rid of it. So I, and this was a lot, this was a lot of glossy plate paint on here. You can see it shining. But I found this big old swatch of green. And that's what I used for the trees. And you can also see some of the brown from where I tore it because it was on painted on the brown paper bag. And this brown paper here was the backside. Well, just the regular old paper bag. So we're recycling a little bit as well. I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the palm leaves that I tore. And there is no rhyme or reason to these things. You just kind of take them and tear. Ta -da. Um, and I love the fact with this green that I did, there were multiple... Um, shades of green in it. I had some yellow in it. I had blues in it. So when these little leaves are all collaged together, they look pretty cool. You could also grab a totally um, different piece of painted green for a little variety in there. Oh, I like that. I don't know why I didn't think of that to begin with. These are the ones that are in the sunshine might be a little highlighted okay so you have all these great green leafy bits right um, and like I said the stem the stems the trunks of the palm trees I just had a piece of brown paper and I tore it if you want to cut it you can cut it um, I was trying to find the grain of this paper so I thought well I could just like rip it really quick and it would work but it didn't so I'm just using my fingers to guide it um, just as carefully 
as I can. And this this was like the hardest part of this whole painting was trying to get these um, trunks not so crazy wonky. Like I had some that were, oh here it is right here. I like that one. <laughs> but I'm like, it wouldn't really fit into my painting. But maybe it'll work with this one. And I'm gonna tear another one. And you could add as many, you could put these in the background. Um, I used two in the foreground and one in the background. And actually, I kind of tucked it behind this tree. I mean, this little hut right here because I wanted it back there. Okay. All right. So now it's time to actually adhere this to our painted paper background. Now, I think I'm going to do something different. Um, because this is not dry completely and I want to keep on moving. When I was creating this one this morning, I thought this would also look super cool on a piece, a solid piece of white. Okay, so I'm going to really change things up a bit now. But I thought how cool would this look? With that stark white background. Now I do have to add in some water and some sand, possibly, or or not. Let's just let's look at this. Let me scoot it up here. That would be good so you could see it. But I'm lo I love the white. I just I don't know. When I started working with this, I was like, ooh, what a great idea. And I'm just laying this out a little bit, real quick. Nothing, nothing fancy, just trying to get my bearings as to where what's going to go. Okay, so let's say I did this on the white background. And I left everything, you know, no sky. Left that white. If we were to take, um, let's see. We could mix, we could mix, alright. You could use... This is just the same color as this hut right here. But you could do strips of brown mixed in with strips of a yellowy color for your sand. Okay. Um, or not. Let's see what else we could find. Um, I have a lot of painted paper in here, but putting my hands on it. All right, so look at this. This right here is like a manila sheet of paper. You could tear that and make sand. Or you could take this one, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tear the top off of it. Yep, we just painted it, and I'm going to tear it up. Mm. All right, so look what I just did. A little wonky. I got to fix it. I can do that. And this might be our bottom part. Okay, so there are all sorts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm liking that. All right, so look at this. Our little houses are going to sit on the sand. You may have to do a little trimming. Okay. I'm liking that. That's going to look really cool. Um, another thing before I forget, you know I'm a fan of these shadow boxes. Let me grab one. Uh, here we go. This was one that we did um, with the collaged flower scraps, the scrappy flowers. And I'm going to tilt it a little bit so you can see how I've got like one or two blooms that are floating They've got um, a little bit of foam core behind them. You could put something like this in a larger shadow box and have your palm leaves glued so that they're off of the page. Or you create a cute little um, surfboard and have that coming off the page. Here's our little surfboard here. Well, kind of a surfboard looks kind of like a cucumber. But you get the idea. You know, have your little surfboard there. Or you create a little sign that's popped off that says, you know, bike rentals or something like that. 
how cute would that be? All right, so when it's time, and I'm wondering if this will work, if it's not too wet still. I'm going to scoot my little houses up here. Now, if you wanted to, you didn't want to keep it white, okay, all these options, you could do a nice light, like a bright yellow wash, a watercolor wash real quick, which I might do. I might do. Um, the other thing that you can do, which is actually, this is what I'm going to do. This is pretty cool. This is a Crayola um, marker, just a kid's marker. It's not the washable kind. Um, I'm not a fan of those. I don't think they work as well. But you can use marker to create um, watercolor paint, like a whole watercolor effect. The more you put on the paper, obviously, the, um, the brighter the color is going to be. But you take your water and your marker and you just start to rub it in. I do this with my kids at school all the time. We call it, we add the magic water to it. We did some tie-dye fish uh, Friday and they had a ball. And this is just a quick, especially if like you don't have, if you don't have watercolors, or you don't want to mess with um, just thinning some paint. Take your marker. Now I could have taken, I could have taken the um, an orange with this yellow and let it bleed side by side. Now you don't want to go back and add more marker to it now that it's wet because. That's not good for the tip of your marker. Okay, so now we actually have a kind of a watercolor wash background. So we'll leave it like that. I wanted a little bit more yellow in there anyway. You could add a big old orange sun in the background. It's up to you. I put a sun in mine and the palm tree ended up covering it up. So that was that. Okay, so this looks... It's damp, but we're going we're going for it. We're going for it. So you're gonna get your fun matte medium now, and or your matte gel, and this is basically a clear paint adhesive. That's all it is, and it's matte. So when you go back with your paint pens and do all that fun stuff, they adhere to it still very nicely, and it gets all over your fingers, and you gotta peel it off like skin. You can, I've been told you can put like hand lotion on before you start and that does help a little bit with all the um, stickage. But I'm going to start putting this down and I'm going to put it on this back piece. Usually I would put it on the piece itself but it's still a little wet. I'm going to lay that down. Look at that sun and sand. And get that edge really good. Hoping that I don't pick up too much paint all over the place. Let's see. Watch. I'll press that down with my paper towel. <laughs> Might get a little paint off there. That's okay. I'll go back and add more. So now it's house time. I'm going to start with the one in the middle. Um, I think I'm going to cut a tad off the top. Just let's see here. See how that goes. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so I'm spacing that out. I'm going to get this one. Lots of matte medium. If your paper is super thick, um, you can wet your paper first with like a wet sponge or paper towel. And that'll just help the fibers um, get a little bit more damp. So they soak up the matte medium. And I paint right over it. And I'll do the same with the little roof. Okay. Now, could you have taken this? And here we go. I'm doing something different. Um, torn the edge here so it looks like a kind of a thatched roof. Absolutely. And lay that one down. You could have taken your scissors and really cut into it to give it some zigzags. 
You could also, if you want to get really fancy here, you could tear pieces of paper to create that thatched roof look. But we're going to keep them solid for now. Your possibilities are endless. Let's see, I'm going to put these doors right in the center this time. Go over that. Get it good and stuck. Alright, I haven't decided where I want to put the, the little embellishments yet. We're going, we're going to wait on that one. Alright, did I cut some of that off? I did. Let me cut a little bit of this one off. Trim, trim. Now, I may have changed this color. Seeing that I did that yellow background, but well, it'll still work. Okay, get you nice and flat. And I'm going to tear this one too. Just because I did the other one. Helps to have little fat tearing fingers here. That's got a nice edge on it. I like the torn edge. And remember, this stuff is clear, this matte medium, so, you know, you can get it all over the painting, and you're not going to see it. When I was putting mine together, I actually had um, some wet paint to get into the matte medium, so a lot of mine has kind of a, a yellowish hue to it, <laughs> but that's okay. That could be the golden hour. And this does dry clear, because it looks a little hazy right now. But it dries clear. I'm getting ready to get to the trees, my favorite part. And stick this one down. I could speed this up. We'll get the idea here. And be generous with the matte medium, especially if your paper is thick. This one's super thick. This is a nice, heavy piece of watercolor paper. I can barely tear it. So this is one of those that you might want to wet first. But I've never really had to. I just use extra matte medium on there. Put that one down. Yep. Have to get your fingers in there and get a little bit dirty. Okay. So there we have those. Oh, and we need another door. Coming up, once you stay down, you can always go back and add more matte medium because I always find some of these little edges want to start curling up here and there. Okay, um, so now our little embellishments. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I think I'll put them above here because I'm going to put some um, paint marker on the roof to give it like a, a hut look. All right, you're really sloppy wet right there. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, we had a green heart, which I don't know if I'll... That's a little big. That's a little big. Now I'm going to get matte medium on my scissors. So I'll remember that next time I start to cut. All right, there's my little heart. And this one had a moon. And where did the moon go? Ah, here it is. That's probably... Got enough uh, matte medium on it. Okay, so here, here is the the skeleton of our picture. All right, I think it's so cute. It looks like it could have popped right out of an illustration, oh yeah, children's book. So I'm going to set this tree on here. Uh, might do this one here. Let it come up some, and. I like odd numbers. We're going on with this wonky one, I think. We're going to wonk it out right there. Who cares? All right. Good old uh, paper bag palm tree. The beautiful thing about the paper bag is it's so thin, it goes like right on and sticks. I think I'll scoot it over a little bit, overlap that house be good. Oh, this might make him getting sticky now. And this one, put you here. And get you nice and slathered down. 
All right, it's time for the poems. Same thing. Matte medium. I'll start over here. And slather, slather. Uh, these palms don't necessarily look just like palm leaves. Um, you're just given the impression. You know, everybody knows that this is a beach with these little beach huts. So they must be palm trees. Right? So do not get all uh, crazy about your leaves being perfect. They don't have to be. I like that lighter color. You see that on top of the, the darker? That gives it some nice depth there. And we'll add this. Um, it's going to go right off the page, and then I'll cut it later. That'll work. That's what I did to my other one. Put this one here, overlap. Kind of like making a big flower. And there we go. Here's a nice big long one. Might as well put it on there. Might as well. The nice thing about the matte medium is you can kind of manipulate this stuff while it's still wet, move it around, and you don't have to worry with it. Uh, that's a wonky tree. I, I love it. And I love going in when we're all finished and adding the paint markers. Now, I like it. I like this both ways. Looking at it here, I think it looks really cool without any of the details. But then once I got the paint pens out and started playing with them, um, you know, I kept adding and adding and adding. I didn't mess it up or anything, but I kept going, kept going with it. <laughs> it was fun. You know, the more I did, the more I liked it. I was like, oh, it could go either way. But I think, you know, this in a white frame somewhere in a kitchen or a bathroom or something. Housewarming gift people. Gosh, people would love getting your own art. Okay, so now, there we are. Um, you could go in. I put a little green at the bases of the palm trees. Um, I'm not really sure why I did it, just to kind of hide them. I don't think you need it, especially these. I think these look cool, as is. But I like, if I were going to leave this one just like this, I like the primitive fact that the doors are ripped and they might overlap a little bit and they're not on perfectly straight and you know the the really elementary waves that are that are you know scratched in here I think it looks really cool so if this were dry which it is not but I'm going to move it over here and we're going to go back to my first one with the paint markers um, you know, you've got to make sure that your artwork is dry. I took this one and I hit it with a hair dryer for a little while. And then I put it on the cool setting and, and hit, it, hit it because I still, I think the cool, um, sets it a little bit better. Um, so I used this fun one, Premium Prime Primo Gold. It's the best gold out there if you really want some gold. I did little dots of sand here and there. I gave my huts a little sun-kissed uh, lineage up there. I used the black. And I like going around these a little bit, but I like being loose. If you were to get so um, constricted and... You know your lines had to be perfect you'd lose your mind so if you make them kind of wiggly you know not so perfect from the get-go it looks like you meant to do that um, you could even come in here and add there's that little thatching because I did not tear the corners of these okay I love the white 
the white is such a fun little highlight here and there. I went around the doors just to make them pop little white doorknobs. You could just add some little dashes or little dots in there with the white. You could go back and hit the palm trees. I put little lightning bolts around here. That's what I like to call them. Just to just to set them off a little bit. Okay. Once this is dry down here, you can add some wiggly lines. Okay. Just like so. I did even go back and I put um, some of the houses had stripes in um, Australia. So I went back with the paint and just kind of did um, suggestion of lines. And you see, they don't even connect, but it gives the appearance of, um, you know, the slats, the wood right there. You know, you could color in different aspects. You could put your last name on the surfboard, or let's just say you're giving this to somebody um, as a thank you. You all went to the beach together and you put the year on the surf oh it's not even 2020 <laughs> you get the idea what i'm working with here um you know kind of as a thank you or a family name or um you know southern california or whatever you know some, something fun like that on there but this this one and this one i mean they're same. they're the same but they're totally different just from, you know, your detailing. And, and it's crazy. I mean, look at the palm trees. These palm trees right here look just like these before I started. And, you know, same with the roofs. Look at, look at how you can change a flat piece of paper with just a few marks and scribble they're they're literally scribbles you're not you're not doing anything you know so per perfect and the sand you know there's the sand that has dots in it or this sand is solid but i like the looks of both of them you know i I'd, I'd see either one somewhere and i'd and i'd love it so have fun with this um think about your own house Think about how it shaped because I want to do um, a tutorial or a little video on creating your house and you're going to look at and pick out the shapes kind of like in the, the folk art dogs uh, and cats that we did. You know, my house that I'm in right now is a large rectangle. It's got a high pitched roof. You know, it's got another addition over here to my studio you know connected by a breezeway and they're all just you know shapes that you could break down and create your house in this style and it would be amazing it would be absolutely amazing you could even rip out you know little kids little, little figures and put them in the yard so have fun make some housewarming gifts make some beach beach warming gifts <laughs> Um, and share what you do. I cannot wait to see and bring on summer people. Have a great day. Bye.